Oh, hello, this is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, please write me at walkwithtalk at gmail.com if you have any question regarding this video or any video that I have made in the past. Uh, if you would like to uh, suggest any video that I should make, uh, please let me know. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, recently, a viewer wrote to me and she told me that she had a coolie cystectomy uh, which is the removal of the gallbladder. Uh, so she need to stay on a low-fat diet and consume as little oil as possible. Her question is that, is it possible for her to stir-fry without oil? And if such is the case, how would it taste different? Uh, when you think about stir-frying, oil is an important part of the cooking process. Uh, the reason oil is important because the oil can reach a temperature where the Maillard chemical reaction can take place. The Maillard chemical temperature zone is between 250 to 330 degrees Fahrenheit. It is at this temperature uh, the molecules on the food ingredients will interact with each other to create flavor molecules. And because most cooking oil do not dissociate until they reach the temperature of 350 and sometimes 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So this allows the cooking temperature to stay within this range. Whereas water will start to dissociate at around 212 degrees Fahrenheit, so it will not allow the food ingredients to reach the Maillard temperature reaction zone. And that's why a water do not create flavor molecules as the same way as you would with frying. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate these two frying methods. The first one is the traditional oil-based stir-frying. And then I'm also going to demonstrate the water-based stir-frying. Not only I'm going to demonstrate the differences of the technique, and I also will show you how they taste different from each other. Okay, in the first method, I'm going to use two tablespoons of canola oil uh, in my Cusina 14-inch stainless steel wok. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to stir fry a broccoli carrot dish. I'm going to heat up the oil right to its smoking point, and then I add the broccoli and carrots to the wok. I'm going to leave the burner setting at high. I use my wok spatula to thoroughly coat the food ingredients with the cooking oil. As you can see that the cooking oil was quickly absorbed by the food ingredients, particularly by the floret of the broccoli. This is really important because when you coat the oil uh, on the surface of the food ingredients, it will keep the temperature of the food ingredients at the Maillard temperature reaction zone, uh, which we want it to be somewhere between 250 to 330 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, I keep the burner temperature set at high uh, because I want the wok temperature as high as possible and I'm not worried about burning any food ingredients because due to my continuing stirring the content. This is the secret of stir frying. It allows one uh, to cook food quickly as well as use a minimum amount of cooking oil. Uh, by continuously stir frying the content, uh, since the heat is focused on the center part of the wok, uh, it will prevent the food from getting burned. The cooking oil is important because it provides a barrier between the bottom surface of the wok and the ingredients. I add a little bit more oil from my oil squeeze bottle because if you look at the bottom of the wok, there's no oil at all. And when there's no oil there, uh, the temperature of the wok bottom will get hot and the food will start to get burned. Now, it's almost ready. Uh, next, I'm going to add some water. This is a step. I'm going to steam the food ingredients. I'm only going to add small amount of water at a time. Uh, the wok bottom is very hot. As you notice that as soon as I add water to the wok, it starts to steam immediately. A moist heat as created by the steam is far more powerful to penetrate into the fiber of the vegetables. A few quick stir uh, the dish is ready. Now, if you prefer the vegetable more crisp, uh, you can skip this step completely. And this method definitely gives the food ingredients better flavor because you can see the charring on the surface of the broccoli and the carrots. And for the next method, I'm going to use only half 
tablespoon of cooking oil. Uh, as you can see, this barely covered the surface of the wall. So I have to uh, use a rocking motion to distribute the oil onto the surface of the wok. And with this method, I'm going to reduce the oil usage by 75%. Uh, this small amount of oil uh, will give the food ingredients a little bit better flavor. So I did it exactly the same way. I add the carrots and the broccoli to the wok. As you can see, almost immediately, the oil is completely absorbed by the food ingredient. In this case, I turn the burner to medium. Because if I turn it at high, since I don't have oil as a barrier, it's much likely for the food ingredients to burn. So to reduce the temperature of the wok, I add a small amount of water to the wok. As you notice that as soon as the water touched the wok, it's turned into steam immediately. And the logic of this method actually is quite simple. What I'm doing is now, I use the wok to cool down the temperature of the wok so that it will not burn the food ingredients. Without that, the water, the surface wok becomes so hot and the food ingredients will be burned very rapidly. And by using a small amount of water at a time, I constantly make adjustments uh, to the temperature of the surface of the wok. When I notice that the wok is getting too hot, I add a little bit of water, and the wok will heat up again. I will add a little bit more water at a time. And as you notice that in here, I have uh, a wok spatula in one hand, uh, allow me to continue to stir the food ingredients. I have a water bottle in my other hand, uh, so I can add a small amount at a time. Uh, this coordination is really important. Uh, this method is important in terms of the timing. Uh, you can decide how long you want to do this, depending on how much you want the texture of your ingredients going to be. If you want it to be softer, uh, you do it a bit longer. And at the end, when you think you have cooked the ingredients to the right texture that you want, and if you like to soften it a little bit more, then you add more water so you can have water actually sitting at the bottom of the wall. In this case, uh, the heat moisture would be more effective in penetrating through the fibers of the vegetables. Now, this method in many ways is a combination of uh, frying and steaming at the same time. Uh, because uh, you still fry the vegetable at the Maillard temperature reaction zone. Instead of using oil, you control the temperature with water. So right here, if you look at the appearance of the broccoli and the carrots, uh, you can see that there are some charring. And the reason is that because uh, when we add just a small amount of water at a time, the temperature will be high enough to cause it to char. But at the same time, it also looks like they have been steamed as well. When you taste the vegetable in this dish, you can clearly tell they are not being steamed because they have much firmer texture as compared to if you have steamed them. They are not quite frying either because they do not have the oil flavor associated with it. But what is the trade-off? Let's take a look at the differences in terms of uh, uh, calories. In the oil-based stir-frying, we use two tablespoons of canola oil, uh, which is equal to 240 calories. And for the vegetables, we use 10 ounces of broccoli, uh, which is 100 calories. And we use two ounces of carrots, which is 23 calories. And together, this dish is going to have 363 calories, uh, which is not bad at all for the vegetable dish. So in the second case, we're going to use only half tablespoon of canola oil, and that is equivalent to only 60 calories. Now, uh, the vegetable is still the same. There's a huge difference in calories. It's only about half as much. Now, if we switch to the entire dish as a water-based stir-frying, so there'll be no cooking oil at all, and of course, the vegetable is the same, and now we've reduced it further to only 123 calories. So as you can see here, if you are looking to lose weight and you want to uh, consume as little calorie as you can, uh, then the water-based stir-frying method could be very useful. 
uh, either by uh, using a combination of the oil-based and water-based stir-frying, or you can completely eliminate the oil. Uh, one of my friends has adopted this uh, approach because he really want to uh, make a concerted effort in losing some weight. And he decided if he consume as little calorie as he possibly can, uh, it would be a more effective strategy. He now used this combination oil-based slash water-based frying technique in most of his cooking. And he discovered that by varying the ratio between the oil and water, he can pretty much achieve the flavor that he is looking for. If this is also what you're looking for, please give it a try. I post a video each day to help you to make home cooking as part of your daily routine uh, using my fast cooking system that will make your home cooking practical, efficient, creative, and fun. So if you're interested in this cooking system, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. So keep on cooking. I will see you tomorrow.